Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Rando Geek. So we have an article here from Investopedia. It's regarding an update from Verizon. The link will be down below in the description for you. So Verizon is set to report a declining profit despite progress in adding subscribers. They're saying Verizon plans to take a one-time charge for its struggling business unit. The article is dated January 19th of 2024. Let's take a look at the key takeaways here. So Verizon's fourth quarter earnings likely declined by a third, not including a planned one-time charge. The company likely added its most retail subscribers in two years after losing customers in five of the past seven quarters. However, analysts say subsidies and promotion costs to add new customers may have outweighed the benefits. All right, so like I said, they are likely going to report a profit loss by a third, according to analysts. They're also saying that a decrease does not include a planned $5.8 billion charge, which is to report to reduce the reported value of its business group. So why would this be, right? Why is Verizon reporting a reduced value of its business group? According to the article, they are suggesting that their sales in the fixed landline services are the reason behind it. Businesses are not choosing to use Verizon for their landline services. There's a lot of reasons why this could be. Pricing. Also, many large businesses, large businesses, more than 100 employees, choose to use VOIP services. It works well with all of their voice calling equipment. Cisco, Avaya, call centers use these types of equipments. They don't use traditional landline phones right? So therefore, VOIP service has become the new normal for large businesses. It's more affordable. It's easy for an IT department to update and work with. You know, most of the time, all everything can be controlled from the app. And, uh, you know, IT is, you know, they usually have at least one or two people that are very experienced with call center uh, equipment and phone lines. So therefore, this is just what's going on now. You know, Verizon's business landline services are just too expensive. And Verizon does have their own VOIP service, but it's likely unfavorable by many businesses. There are many other, much more popular uh, VOIP services that even the largest tech companies go with. So, you know, Financial institutions, courts, schools, you name it, are just not going to pay for an expensive landline service that honestly just doesn't offer enough benefits. A lot of the VIP services offer so many more perks and benefits, and it just literally integrates with everything. All of the desktops, laptops, even cell phones. Um, with that being said, I do think that Verizon has a high demand as far as mobile plans go. I think a lot of large institutions are still choosing Verizon. I think it's favorable within these businesses, which is why they're still profitable in some way, or there's demand for it, should I say. I've personally, I've seen it in many companies where Verizon is the chosen one. I know in financial institutions they are. I know in court systems they are. I believe um, there's a few other businesses that I think find Verizon's mobile lines for, for corporations valuable as well. So if you work for a company and they use Verizon, let me know down below because that's my understanding that they're definitely probably a top pick. Um, maybe secondly would be AT&T. Not many are using T-Mobile, um, far as I know. I know there was uh, a company or two that was using Sprint, but they were just looking for the cheapest thing. Um, and they quickly, when a, when a little management change happened, they quickly went straight to Verizon uh, because a lot of people were complaining about the service at the time. So anyway, with that being said, you know, this is this is why they're losing, you know, losing money here. So the second largest U.S. wireless carrier likely will report earnings of $4.6 billion, they're saying, or $1.06 per share on a diluted basis, excluding one-time items, according to the consensus estimate of analyst 
surveyed by Visible Alpha. That's down from $6.7 billion or $1.56 per share in the last quarter of 2022. They're saying revenue likely dipped 2% to $34.6 billion. And then we can see here the uh, graph or the chart here. All right. And then, like I said, they're blaming it on declining demand for land and fixed line services for commercial customers. They're saying that that accounts for about a fifth of the company's sales fell an estimated 2%. They are saying, though, they uh, basically had a bump in retail customers. They're saying it's up, well, it's at 573,910 customers. They're saying it's up, I think, from just 4,000. So that's the highest they've seen in two years in which um, the unit had lost subscribers in five of the past consecutive seven quarters. They're saying even as subscribers likely increase, the cost of Horizon's latest push to add subscribers have outweighed the benefits at this point, Bank of America Securities noted in a report this week. Those costs include subsidies paid to new subscribers and upfront marketing expenses. So like I said, the profit is most likely from mobile services. They're still popular when it comes from their mobile phone services, but the landline is just not, it's not happening. And they were probably spending a lot of money in marketing to try to push those out. And um, it just didn't work. You know, I, they probably lost a little money on the mobile line side as well on marketing. But I mean, even the article suggests it's it's coming from landline services. We know that even on consumer side, people just don't use landlines anymore. It's not a thing. It's a thing of the past. They're too expensive. If you, I did a quote to see how much AT and T would charge for a landline service, and it was fifty five dollars a month for one line, plus tax. And I would probably not use it enough to get my money's worth, you know. So what did I do? I got Magic Jack. Why? Because it was like twenty dollars a year. I paid three dollars for a vanity number. And I'm good to go. Like, and I'll, you know, it doesn't get used that often. I mean, a little bit, but not, it would never be used enough to justify $55 plus tax a month. For that, I could get an AT&T postpay plan, which I would use way more, right? So that's the thing. Like, it's not only is it not in demand, but it's expensive. And businesses, especially businesses, would get charged far more from Verizon's landline services. So they're going VOIP. It just makes more sense to them. They have more security with it, right? There's a bunch of other perks that come along with it as well. Super convenient, right? You can basically make calls from your phone with, you know, with those numbers, right? And it looks like, looks like, you know, you're at your job. Like if you're a manager for some large firm, you have the app installed on your phone, you're calling out, it looks like you're at your desk. You know, you're talking to a customer, you're doing a business transaction. It's all good. You can't do that with a landline service. You have to be at your desk and you're charged, you're being, you're paying a lot of money for that. So like, it's just not usable anymore. Really, the only thing a landline is good for now is for a couple of people that still like that landline service. They don't, they want real landline service, not VOIP landline service like Magic Jack. They want traditional caller ID showing up. You know, there are some restrictions with something like Magic Jack for a consumer, but that's really the only people that are still using landlines. That's the only reason they're even still around. They're good for calling overseas. You get your calling card, whatever. You do things the old school way. And some people like it, and it's all good. But businesses have to save money. They need what's convenient. Like I said, it's cheaper for them to get VOIP service. There's more perks. There's more benefits. And it's just overall, it just makes more sense in 2024. So I don't know how Verizon will turn that around. Um, They'll have to figure out something. I know they offer VOIP services as well, but it's likely it's not... It's not um, up to par with businesses as some of the more popular VOIP services are. As always, thank you guys for stopping by and watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.